29 runs scored in last night's Blue Jays Phillies game, bud. Hey, man, I've been telling you for weeks that the Blue Jays are my favorite football team. So <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> Here, here's a list. I love that you brought this up. I've actually got a list of, <laughs> of NFL teams that scored fewer points than the Blue Jays last night. The Colts, the Bengals, the Patriots, the Panthers, the Steelers, the Bears, the Saints, the Texans, the Seahawks, the Titans, the Vikings, the Broncos. Great minds think alike, eh? Jeez. Unreal. The over-under on runs last night for that game was eight and a half. So, Both teams did it. <laughs> if you picked the over, you could have added 20 more runs and been like 28 and a half over under. You still would have got it right. Absolutely insane. And what a sloppy game, which we will obviously get into. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Adam and Scott Suck at Betting. This is our... Pseudo gambling show, I guess, if you will. We're not very good at it, hence the title. Yeah. And I wouldn't recommend that you take any advice from us, but we figured we'd have a little fun and partnered up with BetStamp. BetStamp, of course, is an aggregator of betting sites. So very much like Trivago with hotels, BetStamp is going to organize and show you which betting sites are going to give you the best odds. So we're not here to recommend you gamble, but if you're going to, you might as well make as much money as it at it as you can. Hey, I say the same or thing. Or lose about- as little as possible <laughs> and if if it's our if it's in our case. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you bet. Uh, speaking of crazy odds, I don't know what the odds were for this. I couldn't find it on BetStamp, but this morning, if if you had the over on zero and a half bicycles that would hit Adam on the walk home from school uh, <laughs> over <and> under zero. <laughs> no. I, yeah. I got, I got hit by a bike. So if, if, if you bet on that, uh, you probably had a good payday coming your way. I had both. Now let's in, clarify this up. Idiot. Pedal. Oh yeah. Pedal full, bike. full on full pedal, on. pedal bike. Yeah. No, I was just walking down the, uh, the pathway, took my daughter to school, walking back through a podcast in noise canceling headphones, I assume he was ringing his little bell. I don't know. I didn't hear yeah. it. I don't know who's at fault there, but my shin and my calves are both killing me. I got tangled all up. So, Oh, you, yeah. you have bruises. Oh, I got bru- Well, not yet, but I, I probably tomorrow I'll, I'll put a picture up in the Discord. <laughs> I am a hurting unit. Well, this is great because, uh, I mean, we are now at the point where you just show off your bruises. I mean, obviously, you had your softball incident there that... You know, yeah. I've had my fair just, share of bad tacos. Your fair year. share of bad tacos. That's right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about last night's game. I know we touched on it off the top. Uh, a ridiculous amount of scoring. Mm-hmm. Ross Stripling you, has game been one. the surprise, surprise of the season, right? Yeah. I think that's safe to say. Let's ignore last night for now and just... Be honest with where we're at. Ross Stripling, surprise of the season for the Jays. Yeah, right? absolutely. The pleasant surprise of the season. I've been hearing some people, uh, Blair and Barker, talking about him and like the is he the MVP of the Blue Jays team this year? I got to pump the brakes on that a little bit. Okay. I don't think he's the MVP of the of the. Like how many stolen bases does he have, right? <laughs> but, no, I'm, who's not, who's your most valuable Blue Jays player? Manoa. I mean, Manoa is for sure ahead of of Ross Stripling. Uh, maybe Romano is too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd have to take a real long look at our hitters. He's on a short list, though. Let's be serious. Al- Alejandro he- Kirk is probably in that list. Uh, yeah. Even Vladdy with an off season, to be honest, is still probably our best hitter. Let's not kid ourselves. So, out of curiosity, I know we were talking on Long Toss about which pitchers we would like to see starting and which order in a wild card series. We all had Alec Manoa in that game one, obviously. That's a no-brainer. And I know I said Ross Stripling game two, Kevin Gosman game three. Kevin Gosman has struggled a little bit since the All-Star break, even more so 
recently, if you take a look at his last five starts, he's got an ERA over five. Mm-hmm. We talked about that last week. What's your okay? What, what's yours look like? What's your one? I two, think three look I, like? in all honesty, I'm going to. I, I don't. I'm not going to let this one blip on the radar. And really, let's be serious. Ross Stripling's first blip as a starter, where he just got blowing up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think I stick with what I I said on Sunday on Long Toss of of Manoa Stripling into Gosman. Uh, how about yourself? Are you? Uh, are, does Does last night's game affect how you view Ross Stripling in any way? No, but I also was never uh, Ross Stripling starts game two. Proponent. No, you weren't. Um, I think as of today, my playoff lineup would look like Gossman and Manoa one and two. I don't really have a pref. There's arguments to be made for either order there like you know putting the more experienced guy in the opening game while the pressure's on and you know Gosman's been incredibly good at home so depending on whether they're on the road or not there's all sorts of stuff to analytics to analyze but I do I think I would go Barrios starting game three with a really short leash that's interesting with stripling like ready to go you like stripling in the bullpen Bullpen, but like maybe five innings out of the bullpen. Like be ready to basically pitch a full game. But it is going to be so interesting to see how this organization and this front office organizes that. I, I don't think there is a wrong answer. As long as Kikuchi's not in the list, I don't think there is a wrong answer, Look, right? I, so For playoffs, we have to lose two pitchers from our, our playoff roster. Right, like this is Mm -hmm. expanded for like does Kikuchi is Kikuchi on our playoff? No, right. So how can you put how can you put him? uh, Yeah, I agree. So what is it? Uh, Pop and Kikuchi are the odd man's out, or is Merriweather? Uh, Merriweather had an ugly outing. uh, Yeah, Merriweather had an ugly one there too. And I know there was a tweet from our good friend of the show, Lewis Foster, who basically his tweet was was the shape of the pitch matters and Merriweather is a prime example of that and what he means by shape is the dip and the dive and the spin and because Merriweather throws 99 miles an hour Mm -hmm. his his changeup when it's on is great but if he's not if, if 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 his spin rate decreases and he's not getting that dip and dive and it's just a flat 99 well we watched what happened last night and it was not pretty man that game was ugly like right from inning one with with the errors on the the Phillies are a defensive nightmare. Mm-hmm. We yeah. watched them sail balls over first base numerous times last night. We watched Kyle Schwarber there in the second completely misjudge a Danny Jansen fly ball and it turned into a double, which then turned into a run. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we watched the Phillies go out and spend big in free agency, right? They got Kyle Schwarber, someone who, my God, would I ever love to see that big lefty bat with the Jays. It's too bad they missed out on him. He hit his 40th home run last night. I mean, if it wasn't for Aaron Judge, if it wasn't for Aaron Judge, we'd all be talking about Kyle Schwarber and the incredible season he's having. They go out and they picked up Nick Castellanos. Both defensive liabilities. But the Phillies kind of did what most baseball teams do, and they take a look at it, and they're like, you know what? For the offensive output increase that we're going to see, it's going to be worth it. But my goodness, and it, it is worth it. They're a playoff team, but I can't see them doing anything in the playoffs with this sort of defense. No, it's uh, it's going like to be hard Like, it was ugly, right? Like, it stood out. It stood out to you, right? Well, the whole, the whole game was sloppy. Like, there was base yeah, running was. errors where... Bryce Harper got doubled off at two on the yes. the line drive. Like, just weird stuff that, you know. I mean, I think maybe here's a good example of, like, we can be really hard on Bo Bichette and his, you know, caught stealing or just the triple play mm-hmm. that happened to the Blue Jays three days ago, right? Yes. And uh, I, I'm not saying that this is like uh, everybody, let's let them off the hook for a base running gaff, but like even the best players in the world. And that's what Bryce Harper is. Yeah. Prone to make a boneheaded 
brain fart every once in a while, mm-hmm. right? So, I don't know. It, it was an ugly game. It was a sloppy game. Uh, I don't think, I don't think the Phillies go very deep in that in that playoffs though. That's for sure. Neither do um, I. Uh, I know that uh, right now the Blue Jays are sitting in that number one wild card spot, and there's all this talk of who would you rather play. Everyone says Cleveland. There's people saying Seattle. I I just want first place. I want that first wild card spot. I want a home series. And if I'm choosing, as crazy as this might sound, I want the Rays. I want the Rays over the Mariners. The Mariners pitching is unbelievable. And on top of that, they are clutch when it comes to their offense. Okay, so for me, I would say... You know, not to put the cart before the horse, right? But here's a different way of looking at this. You know, which wild card spot would you want, right? Do you want the Guardians? Do you want the Rays? Do you want the Mariners in that first round? Let's just assume if we're going to go to the World Series, if my math is correct, we're going to have to win in the first round, regardless of who we face, right? Agreed. Um, so... In the second round, our choices are the Yankees and the Astros. Now, I think we would both agree the Astros are a much more uh, intimidating opponent at this point in the season than the Yankees are, right? 100%. So, if we finish in the sixth spot, we play Cleveland in the first round, Yankees in the second round are waiting for us, and then if we get past the Yankees assume it would be the Astros and the ALCS. So, so in this scenario, you're you're rolling the dice that another team might be able to get lucky and beat Houston. No, I, I guess I'm assuming that Houston is going to beat any team that isn't us. I, like, I'm just, okay. I'm going to play out the hardest case scenario, right? I don't want to bank on, well, maybe we'll get the Mar- or the Rays in the ALCS. I don't want to count on that. What I do want to count on is the ALDS, is a best of five, the ALCS, best of seven. If we're playing the Astros at some point, do you think that it's in our favor one way or the other in a five-game series or a seven-game series against the Astros? Do you think yeah, it I'd makes rather, a difference? I'd rather the Astros in a five-game series. I, I think, think so, short, too. I, 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 feel like, I feel like we could steal three in the, the longer... The longer it goes, the more that plays into Houston's incredible pitching. I agree. So uh, in that case, yeah, I would say if we get them in the ALDS in that second round there, that's probably our best time to face them, right? So if you're placing a bet, right, and this would be a prop mm-hmm. as to who finishes where for the playoffs, mm-hmm. big money to be had if you're betting on the Jays to win the division still. Yep. Big money. Like you, you put twenty bucks down, and we're talking uh, some major cash coming back your way. I know Adam's just looking it up right now. By the way, if you are going to sign up for BetStamp, which we suggest you do if you are going to do any gambling at all, because it, they really are going to show you which sites are giving you the best payoff. So you might as well get the best payoff when you sign up. Please use the code Walk Off to do so. That's very helpful to us. We're not getting any sort of commission or anything like that off of your gambling wins or losses. They are paying us directly. However, obviously, we're renewing our contract with them at the end of the month. And if our numbers look good, that is very good for us. So if you're a fan of the podcast and you're going to sign up anyways, again, walk off is the code. Okay, so if we're looking at some future bets here and we're we're confident in the blue Jays are going to overcome the Yankees and just win the AL East outright. We're line shopping here. Basically everybody has uh, the blue Jays at plus 1600, but bets bet 365 only has them at plus 1400. So if bet 365 is your go-to and there's a good chance that maybe it is because that's the one that advertises on Sportsnet quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you put 20 bucks on the Blue Jays to win the AL East at Bet365, you're going to win $280. Pretty good payout. But if you line shop with Betstamp and you go to like 
uh, bet win or party poker, uh, plus sixteen hundred. You bet the same twenty bucks. Your payout is uh, thirty two hundred or sorry three hundred and twenty dollars. So it's like an extra sixty bucks. Yeah. I don't know. I just. I still don't think they're going to. To be clear, so if you have twenty dollars to set on fire, go ahead. Yeah. But but this is the thing though. If you look at the Blue Jays schedule, what are we at? Where there's about 15 games remaining. The basically for the Jays to get into a situation where the AL East is up for grabs. Now they're five and a half games back of New York as we speak currently. They play Philadelphia today. They need to sweep Philly in this two game series, so they need a win today. They play the Rays four more games. They need to take three of four, and they need to hope Boston takes three of four from New York in their four game series. That would line the Blue Jays up to be two games back going into a three-game series against New York. And that would be with nine games remaining. Not not impossible. Man, would it ever have uh, been nice if Pittsburgh could have held on to the win last night, eh? Right? My goodness, that would have helped. But you can't night. count on the Pirates to do anything other than lose... And make boneheaded plays. Absolutely, they're multitaskers in Pittsburgh. They can eat, they can eat sunflower seeds, and be oh in the middle of a baseball game. <laughs> you saw that play? Oh my god! Oh, that was so Amazing. bad. We talked about that on Long Toss, buddy. It was so bad. Brian Hayes. Like this is one thing we talked about on Long Toss with just the Pirates in general. Is like, at what point do you start benching some of these young players? We watched. We watched uh, Castro there with his phone come fly out of his pocket a couple weeks ago. We watched Cabrian Hayes literally glove off eating sunflower seeds in the middle of a play. The guy's rounding third right in front of him. Ball's coming in. He's like, listen, of, oh. there, and, and we did talk about this. There was nothing he could have done anyways. But can we act like there's a game going on? The optics are so <laughs> bad. So bad. Anyway, Man, so yeah, I, that'd be like if a guy was on your bench, like playing Nintendo Switch or something. Like, sure, yeah. Have, like, just come on, man. Be in the game. Be in the game. Act like you're a professional baseball player, even if you are playing on a Triple A team in Pittsburgh. You know. <laughs> All right. So Pittsburgh was up what eight to five, eight mm -hmm. to four in the ninth inning. Aaron Judge yeah. comes up, hits his 60th of the of the season. Uh, the same swing of the bat took him into the lead for the uh, batting title this year. So, like, as it stands today, Aaron Judge is sitting on a triple crown. He's what incredible. Say, like 10 games away, 15 games away from a triple crown. And the point. batting average, the batting average title is the only thing up for grabs right now. He is so far ahead in home runs and so far ahead in RBIs, there's basically no chance for anyone else. Like, so, what is yeah. the RBI differential there, Adam? All right, well, let's start with home runs because that's the easy one. Okay. So, yes. home runs, Aaron Judge has 60. He's only racing himself in history. Uh, Jordan Alvarez is in second place with 37. So, 23 home runs back. Uh, RBIs, Aaron Judge is at 128. Jose Ramirez would look good in a Jays uniform. 115, so he's 13 RBIs back. That is not getting yeah. caught. And uh, as of this morning, Aaron Judge is now in first place for batting average with 316. So he's leapfrog Xander Bogarts, who's now at 315, and Luis Arias at 314. Which is wild because if you were to place a bet on Aaron Judge winning the Triple Crown, even what was it last week? Even last week, this is this is nuts. Okay, so let's look at Luis Arise because this is was the hardest one that seemed the most out of reach for Aaron Judge. Yes. Um, he was hitting around three hundred um, at the end of August, but Luis Arise Judge was yeah was at three twenty. Well, Luis Arise was at three twenty as of August 29th. Um and as of today, hitting three fourteen. So it's come down quite a bit, and you're thinking, well, he must have had pretty bad September, but uh, through the first. 11 games of September, he was actually, uh, can I get this in time? He was hitting 340 until September. Better 14th. than his average. Better yeah. than, yeah, he's having a great September. But then all of a sudden, what happens in the last, what, seven games? So since September 15th, 
Uh, Luis Arise hitting 174. He's gone four for 24 at the plate. He's mirrored the rest of the twins, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fitting right in, as they say in Minnesota. Um, so think about that for a second, though. Like, just think about that for a second, right? One shaved, bad week. He shaved seven points off his batting average. Think about how hard it is to hit 320. It's insane he was there for as long as he was. And I mean, even if the guy finishes the season continuing to slump and finishes around 310, incredible. What an accomplishment. Yeah, great season for sure. Uh, Aaron Judge. Man, after we talked last week's show, I went and looked for uh, some futures bets to get Aaron Judge uh, to win the Triple Crown. It was paying out like 400 to 1 still. Mm Mm-hmm. Man, am I kicking myself right now for not putting like five dollars down? Five bucks that. down. I know. Oh I my know. god! So, but it actually makes me look at it. It makes me look at Goldschmidt and be like, should I risk it? Like, should I just put two bucks down? In fact, now that we're talking about this right now, I think I'm going to. All right. I, I, can you pull up his uh, prop? Is that easy? Uh, no, not, I could just be th- okay. We're throwing you under the bus. We don't yeah. need to do that. Anyways, I will do that on my own. Uh, did you have anything else to to add here, or should we wrap up Scott and Adam, or Adam yeah. and Scott suck at betting? <laughs> Let's wrap it up till the next one. Do you want to uh, preview our guest for tomorrow? Yes, we are going to sit down with friend of the show, Mitch Bannon, the head cool. Blue Jays reporter for Sports Illustrated. He's going to. Talk all things Blue Jays tomorrow, of course. That will be out for everyone on Patreon minutes after we record it. That'll be the unedited version. Of course, we did that with John Gibbons as well. You can always feel free to join our Patreon. That's going to cost you a buck a week, and you get free access to all of our interviews before we release it. On top of that, you've got um, movie reviews, which Adam and I are going to get back into doing here. It's been a busy summer on the road, but we are going to be doing that again. A big thank you to everyone in the walk-off community. Really appreciate all of you. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter at walk-off podcast, Instagram, the walk-off podcast. A big thank you and shout out to Betstamp, our partner on the show here. Feel free to sign up for them if you're doing any sort of gambling and get the absolute best deals you can and the best betting odds around. If you are going to sign up, super appreciated if you use the code WALKOFF, all one word when you do so. All the best, everybody. Cheers.